Kelsey. I'm Shane Galley. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Hourlings Podcast Project. Um, this week we're going to be talking about finding the time to write. This is a topic that we addressed in one of our earliest episodes, an episode where I wasn't there. And um, it has been a very interesting year for me. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to talk about time because the way I use my time and spend my time and the value I have found in time in the last year has uh, really changed for me. Yeah. So how are you guys doing? How are you doing this week? Time-wise? <laughs> oh, it's always a struggle, especially when uh, I'm working on a master's degree. So I, I got writing I got to do that does not have nothing to do with my, my repertoire or my pipeline, I should say. My pipeline of manuscripts I want to get out. But excuses, excuses, right? I mean, everyone's got stuff they got to do during the day. Um, we live at night. We're we're rare writers, right, Dave? Didn't you always used to say that? I'm a rare writer. You're yes. a rare writer, writer. yes, I, exactly. I, I I'm not. I'm writing. usually in bed by 9.30. Yeah, I know. You're the a... night that we do these, do record these podcasts is the night that I stay up the latest every week. Oh, wow. <laughs> We should add that Marty is the full-time writer. Yeah, that's right. That is the the single largest uh, uh, thing that's different about time. And back when uh, I still had a full-time job and I was writing my first um, three novels, um, time was much, much um, more precious. Mm -hmm. And yes. the, the only time I really got to write um, was because I would get home from work um, like two hours before my wife got home from work. And so I would get home and I get to sit down and write for a couple hours uh, undisturbed. But that was really the only time that I really got to write then. And um, it and it still worked. And uh Next thing you know, I had a novel, and next one turned into two, and then it turned into three, and suddenly I got to quit my day job. Ah, many of us aspire to, uh, to Marty's position, which is fantastic, and it's full of hard work, I know, um, but it's a, it's a wonderful aspiration to hold, to be a full-time writer. Um, but for those of us, I mean... You make time because you treat it like a you treat it like a real job. You get up and you get to the computer and you clock in, you clock out, and you get a lot of stuff done that way. Um, right. So I'd love to hear more about your time management there. Um, but for for Marty and I who have day jobs, uh, I guess we can talk mm -hmm. a little bit about mm -hmm. what's that? Yeah, David and uh, I'm you know, sorry, I, say da I, I meant to say Dave. For Dave and I who have day jobs, you know, we uh. We, have, we might have different strategies for time management. So what's your what's your latest, Marty? What's your twist to your? Uh, well, we it's interesting. For after I quit my uh, day job, you know, I would get up and I would write for just a few hours every morning, and, but by the time noon rolled around, I was done for the day. I just <laughs> would not do you know any more writing for the rest of the day. You know, I'd piddle around. We did a lot. You know, we moved. You know, we had to fix up our old house, sell that house, move into a new house. I completely refinished the basement in this house after we moved in. You know, I was all always off doing other projects or going to do stuff. And I wasn't, even though I was retired, you know, technically no day job, I was still only writing a few hours a day. And uh, that's changed this year for me. I decided to get a lot more serious about it. So instead of uh, one or two books a year, I wanted to really crank that up. And um, I had, had read some books about productivity and tips on how to do it. Um, so uh, I started doing that. I decided, okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna treat this more like a job because to be perfectly honest, it is a job. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to clock in and do eight hours a day, five days a week. I'll take weekends off still when my, you know, my wife and I will do stuff still. But once I started doing that, 
my productivity skyrocketed. Hmm. And um, it's, it's the focus because once you get rolling on stuff, it is, it's a machine. It, it, it holds momentum and it actually pulls, pushes that ball way much farther down the, down the field than, uh, than I even imagined. And, and another thing is, is I, um, uh, my least favorite part of the job is all the business uh, stuff you have to handle. And uh, I have told myself, okay, if I'm going to treat this like a job, I'm going to do all that non-writing stuff on Mondays. So I do all my marketing and all my business stuff on Mondays. I spend all day doing that. Updates to websites, you know, doing my taxes, doing you know, all of the business end stuff. And there's a lot of it. There is really a lot of it. More than, more than I actually expected ever. That, But I'm trying to compartmentalize it and constrain it down to just one day. And, and I let myself do that. And so, um, and then the other four days a week is just uh, pure writing or editing. And um, I try not to bleed that into weekend times because I don't want to burn out either. Uh, if I were to work all day, every day and never stop ever, which is could happen, then, you know, I'd stop doing other stuff that I love. I wouldn't be able to attend our writer's group. You know, I wouldn't be able to um, do a podcast, hang out with friends, do this podcast, stuff like that. Although yeah. it's funny, this podcast, I can consider this more like recreation. This doesn't count as work for me because I really enjoy it that much. Oh, me too. Me too. Well, I, I, I will say I also enjoy the podcast, but I, I do feel it's like a learning experience because we end up talking about uh, yeah. a whole bunch of things and sharing uh, knowledge. Um, obviously, as part of the podcast, but also in our discussions before and after. Sure. Yeah, so the one other thing about time management and time utilization that I found out this year was doing writer's retreats. Taking time away where there's no distractions because... Uh, for my life, you know, the distraction factor, which there's not as much as a lot of people. You know, I don't have any kids in the house anymore. I don't have, you know, pets that will howl if I close the door on them or stuff. And, um, and I have a very patient wife that loves it when I close the door and let her watch murder TV all day. That's, that's fine. Um, so, uh, uh, I feel really fortunate in all of those things. And it adds up. And when I do the writer's retreats, talking about focus, boy, I, I you know, the, la the last one I went on, I wrote an entire novel in 11 days, first draft. And, you know, 63,000 words in 11 days, that is like a, a record for me. Um, I have another um, writer's retreat that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. And that's going to be just as much fun. And um, it's the way I'm spending time. If I do, I'm planning on doing two of those writers retreats every year, and that'll be at least two books there. And in between them, I hope to write a couple of other books. So that's that's cool. It's all fun. Yeah, I really like your strategy of compartmentalizing. Um, I think that makes it very. It, it takes away some of the fear of of incorporating writing into your schedule. Um, and one of the things that I've done that's similar to that strategy is I've adopted the idea of writing sprints. Um, my friend Udi uh, is the first person who did this with me and we would both sit at a computer and uh, you know, we would say, okay, for 10 minutes, we're just gonna write. We're not gonna look at our phones, Facebook, none of that stuff. We're gonna sit, we're gonna type and we're gonna write. And if it's crappy, it's crappy, but we write for 10 minutes. So we did that and we'd say, okay, it's starting now. And we would write for 10 minutes. And then at the 10 minute mark, when we would see it on our, on our, uh, on our timer or whatever, on our uh, computer screen, we'll stop and we'll go back and we'll talk to each other and say, hey, how'd it go? Did you write some good stuff? You know, how are you feeling? Are you, are you past writer's block? Whatever it is. Um, and I found that to be very uh, effective because I would take writing in little increments. And, you know, after you do maybe two of the sprints, 
I feel like I didn't need to stop. I could just keep going. Um, so working in those little breaks or finding a way to uh, make your writing routine bite size and until you gain that muscle that can push through um, you know, maybe a hurdle or, or a time conflict, it's a great way to start. I would definitely well, recommend I think it. That's also a great way to, uh, um, if you can't find uh, longer periods of time to write, you can still get something written uh, in a micro increment. Yep. If you have 10 minutes. Right. You can write. Or for instance, uh, I've, I've done this. I have a little writing app on my, um, on my phone. If my wife wants to go into TJ Maxx and shop for half an hour and I don't have anywhere I want to go, I'll just pull out my phone and I'll, I'll write a few paragraphs, half a scene, something mm -hmm. like that. And I'll transfer it to my, uh, to Scrivener later on. There you go. So you can still, you can still accomplish something real in, in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. This reminds me a little bit of, um, I, I'm a big fan of Pope Francis. I understand if you're, that's not your jam, but um, he's one of my heroes. And I remember he, um, he said something, you know, someone was saying, you know, Pope Francis, I don't have time to pray. You know, I don't have time to sit down and do a rosary. And he said, you know, I get my best prayers done when I'm sitting in the dentist's office in the waiting room. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I just sit there and I'll say cool prayers in my head. And of course, I kind of chuckle at this because I bet many people pray in, in the dentist's <laughs> waiting room, right, <laughs> before going in. Um, but that's a great example of, you know, finding little times during the real day and the real routine that we all have to go through to, uh, to incorporate in something important to you. Um, writing can be done. I, I agree with, I agree with you entirely, Dave. I mean, I've, I've certainly written entire book chapters on my phone in a weird place, uh, cause I knew I wouldn't have time later or I, it was just, I happened to have some free time and I decided to fill it up with something important to me. When it's important to you, you find the time. Isn't that right, Marty? That's something you often right. say too. It's, it's funny because my experience now, I like have a Pavlovian association for uh -huh. writing with my desk. Uh -huh. And um, I have this ginormous monitor. I have, you know, a, a beautiful office and lots of uh, space and stuff. And when I come in this every morning with my pot of coffee, I'll sit down. I give myself an hour to dick around, you know, and, you know, read stupid memes on Facebook and, you know, set up my playlist for the day. But eight o'clock at the latest, all those windows go away and I start working. Nice. And it's really funny. On a really good writing day, I look up and it's lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> and so my sprint goes for four hours. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, hey, after you after you do a couple of those sprints, so you can keep going. You don't need to stop. Uh, it's it, it really is like a muscle you have to build up. Um, and when you're doing, like for me, like when I'm doing academic writing too, there's many instances where you're tempted to to just stop and just be like, nope, this isn't working, or nope, this is hard, or no, I don't know what to say next. Um, and Speaking of Pavlovian associations, you can also have the opposite uh, Pavlovian association where you, if something is hard, you have the association of leaving. Like, okay, this is hard, so then now my response is I leave, right? That's, that's what you do, right? You leave the desk when something is hard. But if you can train yourself out of that to just push through, um, it doesn't take you as long as you think it might have, it would have taken you. you a couple more minutes of thinking it or working it out. Uh, you push through and keep going. Um, that, that is a good habit to build. So be uh, careful. Uh, Five Logan Associations, be careful which ones you build. <laughs> also, even if you kind of have to force yourself and perhaps part of what you wrote wasn't quite as good as you want, but some of it was. Um, I, I find if I've written something, it's much easier to come back and edit it. And in some respects, my editing muscles are more powerful than my creative writing muscles. But they got to have something to work on. If it ain't on the page, that's right. That's there's right. Nothing to work with. Yeah. So, Dave, uh, how do you how do you spend your time mostly now? How um, do you how do you manage it? Well, a, a couple of things to note. First of all, I, I have a day job, and it's not one of those day jobs that you can kind of um, um, coast through. So, um, and it takes a fair amount of brain power. 
So um, by the time nighttime rolls around, I'm not always at my best or I'm not at my best for, for very long. Um, so what, uh, what happens for me is uh, I write, uh, I do something, first of all, I keep a daily log um, and I have, I must write, sorry, I must do something writing related um, and preferably several things writing related every day of the week, bar none. Um, I, I also have an Excel spreadsheet where I keep track of my word count. Uh, and so I have a word count expectation per week. Um, and I'm trying to exceed that. So for, for instance, right now, um, in the first, I, I guess, two and a half months of, uh, uh, of 2022, I managed to do 20,000 words, um, plus work on two anthologies, um, plus get a, a, a paperback out, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So those two, those two things really helped me. Um, one is my daily log where I, I feel guilty if I didn't get something writing related done in the day. It could be editing something. It could be um, uh, making sure one of my chapters gets critiqued by the writing group. It could be uh, actually writing a chapter. <laughs> um, uh, it could be formatting um, a paperback or a hardcover edition, um, but something significant to, uh, and preferably se several something si significant has to be done every single day. Uh, and like, like I said, I'm focusing much harder on the word count. I think one way to make time too is to have. Um, and so far, it's working. Sorry, we, we overlapped there because of my lag for a second. Um, one one great way to make time is to have non-arbitrary deadlines. And what I mean by that is not just you throw a dart on a calendar and say this is the deadline, but um, get involved in a writing group that meets at a certain time, and then you say, okay, by the writing group, I need to submit something. That, that will force you to make time pretty quickly because you have a deadline, you have to, you have to meet it. Uh, if you're not in a writing group, you could uh, do it with a friend, someone who's a, a, a reader, someone that you trust and say, hey, do you mind if you read my story at this, you know, this time or this uh, two weeks from now? That's a deadline. Um, it's, it, it helps to have, for me too, it helps to have a, a visual a calendar to see, okay, you know, Mondays are the days that I, uh, days that I go to writing group. My writing better be done by Friday at the latest so I can get it out to everyone. Um, and if I can see that on a calendar, I can, I can plan my week, I can plan uh, making that happen. It's very helpful. I actually use a calendar a lot. I'm surprised. I didn't think I would ever have to have a calendar ever again when, uh, when oh, I, I love them. Um, but I, I, I live by it. It's, you know, to, you know, keep track of the must do things or when something's going to happen or. It's a know. physical calendar, right? Yeah. Well, it's my, on my computer. Oh, okay. I have a physical calendar that I just, I'm, I guess I'm old fashioned. Oh, how uh, well, analog can we be? Yeah. yeah I have, I we have, we have a physical calendar on our fridge, but that's restricted for certain things, not, you know. Oh. Not, not all my writing bullshit that I have to keep track of. Okay, that's fair. That, that that's fair. would uh, completely fill that calendar up, and that calendar is just way too small for that. And, you know, my dentist appointment goes on that calendar, as well as my computer. <laughs> but, you know, even this podcast every, every week is on my uh, calendar. Sure. It's the only place I can remember to find the link for the you know, the right Zoom call to get to get in here. It's funny. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. Now I also have my, my wife trained at this point. She she expects the uh, the podcast on, on Tuesdays, uh, which is when we record it. Uh, and she expects the, the writing group on Sundays, Sunday mornings. Um, so she's in, in tune with that schedule. Um, but also on the on the weekend, you know, my wife does want to see me, right? Um, you know, so we've kind of adopted, that. Yeah. So we kind of adopted this thing where um, uh, I'm happy to do chores, I'm happy to do yard work and stuff like that. But uh, you know, on, on Saturdays and Sundays, I, I need to get at least three writing sessions in. 
Sure. And, and I'll define a writing session as a minimum of a minimum of an hour doing actual writing. Mm -hmm. so I got to get at least three of those sessions in during the day. So what else are we doing to facilitate time? Mm. I've been prepping for my next writer's retreat. It's been very exciting. I, uh, the last one, I always do a post-mortem after I do and make long lists. I bought this new keyboard to the, that'll work with my laptop. One of the things that bugged me the most was that I didn't have a full-size keyboard. So not only do I have a full-size Bluetooth keyboard, it's stainless steel, baby. <laughs> and uh, it's really white, lightweight, super thin, yeah, very, awesome. uh, very cool. And I also just got this new Bluetooth speaker for tunage while I'm sitting there because, you know, the last place I had like no internet and uh, so I didn't have tunage and I didn't think, oh, I got to download all the MP3s and bring those with me. Luckily, it was in my brother's place, and he had a big MP3 collection that I could bring up. So um, it's very exciting getting uh, prepped for uh, my next uh, writer's retreat, where all the time will be my own. Actually, you know, one of the things that's been helpful to, to me is we've done a podcast episode on goals for the year. Oh, Yes. And not that I don't schedule things as it is, but this this forced me to say, this is my schedule of publication mm -hmm. that I intend to do mm -hmm. as an indie published author and, um, and their goals. And we, we, as we did last year, we have a mid-year podcast where we talk about where we are <laughs> and we have an end of year podcast where we go, okay, what happened? <laughs> right. Yes. And I'm not going to be the dread failure this year that I was last year. God damn it. So we're, we're at the end of the first quarter. No, uh, that is, that's time. How are you doing on your goals so far? Uh, let's see. I've got one story published in an anthology. Um, I've got, uh, there's another anthology coming out. Uh, it looks like in May and another one in July. Uh, that'll bring in one, two, three, four, four more stories. Um, uh, I've got, so I think by July, I've got, uh, I'll, I'll have like five stories published. Uh, and I've got a book that I'm working on that should be published. It's supposed to be published this month, but I haven't managed to get to it yet. Um, so probably by July, uh, I'm, I'm at six things published this year. And that's roughly the halfway point. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking at about 12 publications. So I think I'm, I might be just a tad off schedule, but not by much. Yeah, I'm right on schedule. I've, uh, I published a book in January. I have uh, finished writing one. It's uh, uh, going out to beta readers in about a week. And um, I've got another one, first draft written already. And in two weeks, I'll be going on a writer's retreat. That'll be the fourth book in the unpublished book in the house that um, uh, I'll, I'll be uh, um, having out. And all of that, you know, ha will be done before the halfway mark of the, the year. Um, I may have to tune mine because it turns out it takes longer to edit them than I expected, I thought. Oh, it only takes 11 days to write it? Maybe it'll only take 11 days to edit it. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think, Marty, there's probably a corollary there that the, the faster you write it, the more time you're going to spend editing. Well, actually... Um, within reason. Within yeah, reason. Within reason. I, I, you know, I wanted to only spend 11 days, you know, so, hey, 22 days, a whole book. No, no, that's not going to happen. Actually, I think it was... Oh, I have it written down somewhere. It was only 26 full days of editing to uh, uh, get it out the door and to the, uh, to the editor. But it was really, really hilarious. First time I opened it up with Grammarly, 3,888 things I had to look at. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love Grammarly and I hate it at the same time. Yeah. So I, I spent an entire day just going through that and uh, 
I still didn't catch everything. Hmm. Uh, it's funny, the editor uh, just sent me an email. She goes, you know, your protagonist's name has been spelled four different ways here. <laughs> What's, what do you want? <laughs> so that's, uh, that's uh, not usually a problem for me because I, uh, uh, one of the things I usually do as part of my outlining is I define all the main characters and, and at least a paragraph of background about them. Um, yeah. And by then, um, Scrivener has actually learned what the names are, and they'll correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I need to, I need to, you know, I could put a variance table in, you know, how it, you, it'll switch it to whatever you want. That's, that's a really great idea. Great idea. I'll have to, I'll have to set that up for the next one. Yeah, I mean, I love it when Scrivener corrects me and says, you got that made up character's name wrong. <laughs> Um, I, I just say that uh, one other thought I had for making time is to um, give yourself rewards or plan rewards for doing writing. And I think this is a, a, a nicer way uh, of doing it than saying sacrifice everything in order to write and you know, sacrifice your TV time, your snack time, your, your couch time. And instead, make that couch time more luxurious because you knew, you know that you completed a chapter. So, um, I have a home theater. You know, what's that part, Dave? I, I have a home theater, so if I really want to relax. But exactly. I, I would prefer to get everything done for the day and then go to my home theater and watch the, the new right. episode or the new season of Bridgerton or whatever. You enjoy it a lot more when That's you know right. you're I'm I'm big about rewards, you know. Yes. It's, uh, I will deprive myself of certain things that I love until I uh, yes. um, meet meet uh, a mile milestone, and uh, you know then I'll celebrate. You know, I'll sit down on the deck with my wife with a nice tall glass of expensive bourbon and a cigar. That's a very very uh, good carrot for my. Uh, donkey ass to finish stuff on time. Well, well I, I think there's kind of two basic strategies for making time. One is to art is to carve out some actual time to do what you need to do. Uh, and the other aspect is figuring out how to use that time more effectively. Um, so a lot of my focus has been on, on that second part, which is getting more out of the time. Um, and, and to that end, that's, that's where having a daily log and having, uh, you know, the word count to, being tracked it really keeps my feet to the fire because I feel guilty if I'm not getting stuff done. Well, my last point about time is my writer's retreat. I'm going to be writing a novel that I was organizing some of my files and I came across an outline that I had written 29 years ago. And I'm going to take this outline and turn it into a novel. <laughs> and um, it is going to be so much fun. <laughs> and uh, I, I, may, I may hold it to publish it on the 30-year anniversary of the outline. Wow, that'd be cool. Okay, that'd be, you know, be, be fun. That'd be really neat. That's, that's something you have to mention in the afterward. Yeah, yes. no, I know. I, I'm going to. I, I will tell the tale of, you know, me cleaning up files because my hard drive was getting full and finding a, a folder with an esoteric name that I just vaguely remembered in my back of my head. And then I, you know, found files that were in word perfect format. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> Big fun. But it's We're funny, perfect. it actually had a date inside it the, <laughs> that uh, it, was, it was written. So that it's really fun. I'm, I'm totally, mis that's one of my projects right now that I'm working on is massaging that outline um, in prep for uh, this writer's retreat. Yeah, and then I'm going to hammer it. It's going to be fun. I don't think I have anything. Hmm, that's not true. I don't think I have anything 30 years old. 
But uh, I have a lot of game outlines from uh, when I was running role-playing games. They were like interactive uh, novels. And, I, and I'm not even 30 years old. So I don't have anything 30 years old either. That's so right. I probably have some outlines out there. That are Marty's outline is older than I am. <laughs> That's right. It's like, wow. No wonder, <laughs> no wonder my hair is white. Yeah, in that process, I found, I found some even older writing that I did. And oh man, was it bad. <laughs> like uh, we, all, we all got a couple of those. You know, yeah. I wrote it on my Apple IIe back in the early 80s. That's frightening. Frightening. Yeah, I have a few things from high school. Not to, that will never see the light of day. Never. Yeah. <laughs> so time is the fire in which we burn. There you go. So burn wisely. Yep. Any other last words, guys, before we roll out of here? This was a good time. See what I did there? Well, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. There's a tendency for people to think of writing as a sprint, and it's really not. It's a marathon. It's Even if all you wrote today that you had time for was a paragraph, they, they add up. Uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, uh, Tolstoy apparently uh, wrote uh, War and Peace or whatever uh, at breakfast for like half an hour every day. And that's a that's a huge, huge novel and a classic one. Yes. Whatever right, gets guys, done. I, another great episode. Thanks very much. And we will see you next week. Chowder. <laughs>